Okay, everybody, uh, if we uh, uh, start to uh, get going, let's see, I think we have a few a few people here anyway. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm here to tell you about our new uh, bioproducts engineering program at Alta University. And uh, first of all, let me let me introduce myself. My name is Thad Maloney, and I am a professor here, and and I am the director of this new uh, program that we are just uh, actually now constructing, and that uh, um, we hope some of you will be interested to apply to. So I'm going to tell you today a little bit about Alta University and a little bit about the bioproducts engineering uh, program, and. Uh, as my uh, guest and, and student. Uh, Hello, everybody. I'm Fatima, and I'm a master's student here at Alto. Yes. Okay. So uh, you can get the you can get the um, the student perspective uh, perspective from Fatima, and uh, I will give you a, a little bit different perspective. But uh, welcome, welcome everybody, and um, let us uh, get uh, get going through this uh, slide set. Um, here, just a second. Yes, um, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, about uh, Alto University in in Finland. I think I think that some of you are not are not uh, from Finland. Maybe maybe some of you live here and and and, and know already. Uh, and then about the uh, program that we are that we are putting together, and and I'm very proud of. So and then then you have a chance to uh, ask whatever questions that you you have through the through the uh, chat or 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 directly. Uh, okay. And and uh, we have also some support uh, in the background on uh, specific questions about the application process and, and and things like that. The application uh, time is actually just open today. Uh, okay. So Alto University, I, I have been here now as a professor for, for about uh, 12 years, maybe a little bit, a little bit more than that. And, uh, and that's about how long uh, Alto has actually been existing. And actually Alto, Alto, Alto was formed by uh, the combination of three legacy universities in Finland, old universities that were uh, prestigious, and and uh, cornerstones of, of of our education here, but um, sort of small and uh, you know alone. Uh, so they were they were combined into one university level uh, institution called uh, Alto after the famous Finnish architect. And the, the three universities were the Helsinki University of Technology, right? And that was that was actually the biggest the biggest piece of this. Uh, and that goes back to 1849, actually. And then the, the uh, art, what we call the art, the art school, the University of Art and Design in Helsinki, and the um, the School of Economics. Uh, so a lot of a lot of the activities actually that we have here uh, are are related to combining these three disciplines and being very multidisciplinary. And you'll see that in, in some of the, some of the slides. Okay. Um, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, a, a big part of the formation of, of Alto, which is you now still a very, very young university, was to build uh, a university that was internationally competitive, that had enough critical mass, was big enough, had enough different types of disciplines that, that we could be, you know, competitive in this, you know, very, very uh, competitive world uh, that, that we have. And I think uh, I think that it's fair to say we're we're moving up all the time through the various types of, of of rankings and evaluations that are out there, and and becoming you know more and more uh, prestigious uh, place. So you can see, see see these statistics. I don't go into any more about this. Um, and uh, really, a, a theme of of the university. Is you know when we have these three sort of cornerstones, one in technology, one in design, one in economics, is to build uh, programs and to build to build uh, uh, research and projects that combine these three aspects. So, for example, at, at our department, uh, chemistry together with design has been uh, has been uh, combined to make various courses and classes and 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 research under under that umbrella. 
So you, if you come over here, that's one of the, the things that you would you would see quite a bit. Uh, and uh, really, this the, the formation of Alto has been a very good thing. I think also in a, in a physical way, if you look at like the Alto the Alto campus, before Alto was formed, actually this area that we're, that we're in in in, in Otanimi, uh, outside of, of Helsinki, it was a sort of protected area, and there wasn't much uh, development. But since Alto was formed, there's all sorts of development here. So we're building lots of different kinds of buildings, renovating other buildings. There's there's various uh, shops and and cafes. A new metro station was. Uh, was put in and now now you can take the metro down to um uh for example downtown Helsinki and from there you can you can go anywhere in, in Finland you like. So you have easy transportation and many kinds of facilities. Even even last week a new a new uh you know not nice grocery store opened up uh, very close to where I'm sitting here. So uh, we're building up our infrastructure um all the time and you see lots of new facilities uh, for for students to hang out at uh, the you know library cafes you know all all manner all manner of things, uh, and uh, so I, I have to say that you know the, the physical infrastructure here is improving uh, very much. It's an it's a nice place. And then the last part here, this balance of nature and city vibes. You know that is uh, that is true. We we are actually located on the ocean, and there are little bits of forest around here. There's even there's even a horse uh, stable, uh, you know, just a few hundred meters from where where I'm sitting, uh, but we're very close to downtown Helsinki, at the same at the same time. So it's kind of interesting uh, that way. Okay. Yes, everyday life at at, at Alto. Uh, I don't know what what we can what we can actually uh, say say about that, but you know, I think Finland has. Um, is a very safe environment and a secure environment. And the, the university has a, a very rich uh, student life. So from my experience, I actually I actually studied here also as a, on, on the master's level. I did my undergraduate in the United States, but on the, on the, on the master's and PhD level, I, I studied here. And it has, a, I think, you know, a very, very, very nice uh, student life. And, and uh, uh, Fatima can tell, can tell more um, uh, more about that in a, in a, in a few minutes for her, her experience has been here. Uh, okay. And Finland, <laughs> yes, uh, about about Finland, most famously uh, the happiest country in the world uh, in several rankings in the last in the last um, few years, every year. And and uh, people and my friends, my foreign friends are always asking about that. How is that? How is that possible? But I think I think the translation of that is that it is secure. It is safe that it is it is not uh, not so stressful uh, here, and in that way, uh, people are are content, and 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 people people feel that you know everybody sort of has a shot and a possibility to uh, succeed here, and and it's, I think all those all all those things are true. So you know, I have made my life in Finland, and I I, I like it there uh, very much. This is a picture actually of downtown Finland. So this is about. I don't know, less than ten kilometers from the uh, from the university, and from here you can jump on that that boat, which will take you to Stockholm, for example, <laughs> or, or you can go on boats to take you to Tallinn or uh, other other places. Anyway, and uh, this is more of the same kind of thing about the happiest country. Here's some picture of some happy Finnish people. Uh, I can say from my personal experience, this is not exactly the way uh, you know the way it is. Finnish people are very are very uh, polite and kind and supportive, uh, for sure. And also the people who work and support at, at this university. So you will find a, a good environment to you know to to come into and and uh, be able to uh, function. But it's not exactly you know uh, this type of uh, this type of uh, happiness. But it's also you know it's also extremely clean clean air and clean environment and and uh, it's it's lovely in the uh, in the in the summertime. In the winter time, uh, which lasts a long time, there's lots of uh, uh, lots of snow, but beautiful, uh, beautiful, especially a little bit uh, later in the in the, in the uh, winter, in in let's say February, March, when the sun starts to shine again and it's all white and nice outside. It's quite it's quite beautiful. But I, I like the four seasons, and I, I think uh, I think if you would come here, you you would probably like that too. Um, okay. Anyway, 
that's for, for an introduction. But about this uh, master's program in bioproducts engineering that we are that we are uh, creating. Um, I, 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 I feel myself that as a university, we are really strong in this area. And this thing you see here, Bio2, this is, uh, this is the department where, where I'm sitting right now, where, where I work, uh, and which is basically um, sort of um, hosting this made or it's, it's, you know, the, 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 main, the department mostly behind this, uh, behind this uh, management. And that's the Department of Bioproducts and Biosystems, so we call that bio, bio two or bio squared. And uh, I, I think that um, in this area of wood-based biomaterials and everything what you can make from that, we are really uh, top ranked in research. We have a lot of you know international uh, you know uh, rankers and so on coming here to evaluate us. And and uh, I think in, in terms of uh, of, of research. Um, and uh, education in this area. Um, my, my feeling is, you know, that we are uh, very good, and one of the one of the best uh, in, in in the world. Um, our environmental, our our, our um, environment here is international, and it has been international for a long time. You know, if you go back far enough in history, it was really it was Finnish. You know, I mean, you had you, there was a time when you had to be Finnish to be professor, basically. Not anymore. Uh, half the professors, uh, half the uh, students, roughly, very roughly, are uh, foreigners, and and uh, so we have a very uh, international environment with people coming from all, you know, just like all over the place. Uh, so so for for that, um, this is a good uh, a good place. So most things are uh, are in English language. Uh, and and uh, you can you can function as a non fin uh, quite well in this uh, in this department in this environment. And another thing that I think that we have that is that is um, uh, one of our strengths is that we do research and we educate people that are supporting the industry. So we have a very close relation. Uh, with the Finnish and also international, the European and and, and international uh, commercial sector. So lots of our students do uh, master's thesis and work and so on in different companies. Uh, the companies, uh, you know, they they are, give their input into into what we teach. They uh, offer summer, uh, you know, places, uh, and and many of our students work there. We have uh, research together. We have many levels of cooperation uh, with the Finnish industry and 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 also with uh, international players. So so the, our main our main product actually coming out of this place are well educated students who who are going to uh, renew and strengthen uh, this industry that we're dealing with. The, you know what we call nowadays we call the the bioeconomy. And uh, for what we're, you know, what we're, what we're sort of trying to do here, I, I try to explain uh, this way, right? Uh, sustainability is one, of the, you know, one of the central challenges of, of of the world, and it's a big theme of this university and this uh, department and within this major. So it sort of uh, transects, you know, all types of activities here. And um, for many companies, uh, you know, sustainability means using more biogenic, renewable, green materials in their products. So getting rid of plastics, for example, and doing things with cellulose. And what we're doing over here is we're learning how to use cellulose, which is largely extracted out of the forest, to replace uh, poorly sustainable materials. And in many other, you know, many, many other examples, even other materials that come out of the forest or out of the agricultural sector to do new things with, to make new kinds of composites, new kinds of textiles, all kinds of new kind of, uh, uh, you know, functional materials and, and, and so on. So a lot of our activity and our teaching uh, goes around uh, this theme. Now for the second one over here, uh, you know, honestly, we we are we are we are educating the leaders 
of our industry. The, our industry, you know, when I say our industry, it used to be the pulp and paper industry. Nowadays, it's the bioeconomy. So these are big international players, companies like UPM, Cuminet, Valmet, and Storanzo, and many other companies that are, you know, are, are, are big enough in their sector to be in the top, you know, 10 globally. And uh, they're, you know, the, the leadership in those companies, many of them have been educated actually uh, at this uh, this university and coming out of this department. So we are we're trying to give the skills that the leaders uh, of tomorrow, given that your career may last 40, 50 years, uh, that they will need. So critical critical thinking, sound engineering skills, and and the deep understanding of, of you know bio-based materials uh, and, and what to do with that. And and then you know the third the third block I have here is is that um, you, you want to be part of the international community. I think you know this is a, like a fun and nice place to be. And and uh, the network that you make in this sector certainly for me this is my own personal experience. The network that you make, the friends that you make in your study time, they last a lifetime. So all the jobs that I've got and the career steps that I've made and the the projects I have sold and and the, and the you know. What, a lot of you know what hanging out I, I do at my age it involves you know people I, I I met during my student uh, times over here and you will find the same thing. This is a kind of a small uh, you know a, a, a small group of people in the world who are working in this in this sector. There's just you know there's like some sort of thousands of people in a sort of tight knit community. So you will meet people over here that will be um, part of your 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 career landscape for many years to come. Uh, okay, about about the substance of the of of the program. Uh, the program is called Bioproducts Engineering, and it's also the major, so it's a program and, and and a major, and it consists of these these blocks here. Uh, we have some compulsory studies, so twenty five credits. That's equal to five courses in in our system. Of course, we feel it's important everybody uh, should take. And there might be like about you know eighty students uh, a year, some, some something like that. Taking taking these courses in surface chemistry of, of bio based materials or analytical methods, or or uh, properties of uh, fibers or, or 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 some some other some other subjects that are kind of core uh, core engineering and uh, material knowledge that that you need. Then besides that, or after that you would select specialization courses and there's there's sort of four four main themes that we that we that we have here uh, 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 that we sort of lump the um, the courses into one is biomass so how we take you know biomass and process it into fibers and chemicals uh, wood and wood composites textiles which is a really a growing a growing sector in in, uh, in, in Finland and internationally and then uh, fiber-based uh, packaging, which is the, the thing that the, the paper industry is transitioning into. And within each of those blocks, there's there's somewhere three, four, five, maybe even six courses that, that deal with those themes. And you can take, you know, a specialization, you can take uh, some of those classes, or you can take all of those. If you feel that, you know, Wood, wood, wood. For example, you're you're you just see you know you just love wood and you, you see wooden wooden buildings as the, as the future and you want to know everything about that. So you would take all the courses in in uh, wood, or you may feel that you want to you know you want to get to you know a little bit about each of these uh, areas and and get a more a more general understanding, uh, which of course is important you know for for the top the top jobs. A big forest products company, you know, they might have activities in all of these areas uh, nowadays. So it's good to know something about all of these. So you can mix and match these as you like from these courses that are accepted or that we have uh, deemed specialization courses. And then uh, about a half a year's work, 30 credits, is the master's thesis, the very, very important master's thesis. That is often done with a company, but it's some, it can be done here. It, it, it could be done at a research institute. Uh, you know, there's many, many different uh, scenarios, but many of them are done at companies. Uh, and uh, and sometimes, very often, the companies will pay the students uh, something uh, for for that. And so we don't we don't guarantee that you will be paid for your master's thesis, but it, it is often often the case uh, in our in our department. 
And that's that's something like five or six uh, months of work where you can really uh, practice and demonstrate your skills. So for example, many of the students go into a mill or a company and are working on a, a project that they have and and, uh, and then they, they continue uh, afterwards as a, you know as a permanent uh, job. Not always by by any means, but but very often uh, very often that gives a, a sort of doorway into the uh, in, into the commercial world into landing a job. And then besides the master's thesis, there's there's elective studies. So you have twenty five credits. It's about five credit uh, five courses, but uh, depending on if you take this language course or not. So four or five courses that you can take across Alto in whatever things you want. So if you want to work, for example. Uh, in a in a a mill, and uh, you have a background in, in in you know hardcore chemical engineering, mass and heat transfer, process control, that sort of thing. And you you know you want to go you know into like pro really process engineering types of things. You you could take electives to strengthen you know uh, to strengthen that from one of the other departments in 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 our uh, in our faculty. Uh, or, or uh, you know, many, many other, uh, you know, it could be, it could be business related things, could be design related things. There, there are, are lots and lots of interesting courses across, across the whole Alto that you can use to augment your, um, uh, your, your study plan. So all in all, I think, you know, what, what, what you have is a lot of flexibility to, uh, to build up the type of courses and education that you want. So. One thing about Finland is that um, education is, is is pretty much uh, well. You have a you 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 know it's you have a lot a lot of, of of sort of freedom and responsibility in how you you do your education. So your hand is not being held at all at all stages. Uh, so you can put together the the, the courses um, that you want that will meet your own that will meet your own interests and we try to give you know guidance what is a sensible a sensible thing to do but there are, are, are many ways to to put together um, a, a master's degree um, here um, and what are we you know what is what is our mission you can of course if you come here to study you can define your own mission what you want to do and it's actually very interesting nowadays how how the, the young students do that I mean people people go into you know, cosmetics, people go into what, whatever kind of, uh, you know, fiber optic cabling. I just, you know, people are passionate about all kinds of things. But me, uh, many of the, many of the, uh, you know, the, the big themes that are played here, uh, I, so I, I listed on the slide here, and a lot of them have to do with using the forest resources in a, in a better way, right? So, Replacing unsustainable materials, whether they would be concrete, concrete buildings, or plastics, or, or petrochemicals, or poisonous materials, in, in sorry, in many in, in many types of applications, with things that are, are made from the forest in a renewable way, right? And uh, lots of students, you know, go go into work in, in in different factories and mills to improve the competitiveness of this. So if Finland has a modern industry. And it's very, very important that we that we keep it efficient and competitive uh, in order to survive in the in the future. So there's lots of work to be done doing doing that. And and many many companies are using you know non biogenic materials, so traditional plastic and and those kind of things. And they they want to replace those materials with uh, things from the forest, and they they don't know how to do that, right? So there's lots of Lots of uh, they might hire a student then who knows about about the fibers and 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 uh, uh, you know wood and, and and the chemistry and physics of those materials. Uh, textiles is a big big theme, and those guys are are trying to replace cotton, which is an environmental disaster. Yes, and petroleum type of based uh, uh, textiles with textiles made from trees that can then be renewed, and in Finland. The forest is very stable. Every time a, for, a tree is harvested in Finland, five more are planted. So, so uh, by law, the, the, the forest has to be uh, sustainable. And and um, really, the leadership of the industry that we have, many of them were educated actually at this uh, at this department. 
and we are we are you know keen to provide the leaders of the of the future. Well, we have yeah. a question. I don't know. Oh yeah, okay. Really, sure. Uh, somebody asked. I wanted to. Is it possible to do masses at all without taking lectures during the some busy routine in daytime, for example, work or teaching language classes? Uh, no, I think that that is probably not going to to work uh, very well. We have some amount of of online courses. So within within this program, uh, there will be uh, at least three courses that are online, and those are wood wood related courses that you can take, uh, you know, according to your own your own schedule. Uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, it, while it's not mandatory that you are in lectures, it's it's highly recommended. And and we have a lot of like laboratory uh, laboratory things and, uh, and and contact teaching where it's like important to to work with the other you know people live. So for the for the most part, um, you need to you need to be here. But you know, sometimes there are like exceptions, like for uh, for a course that depends on uh, you know what what the teacher wants to do. Certainly in my courses, you need you need to actually be like. Yes, were there more questions? No. Yeah, okay. There was one, but uh, Susanna answered that. Okay, so good, yes. Okay. Uh, career, yeah, so so I, I assume everybody who might want to study here, uh, you know, in the in the end, they, they want a job. We all, we all, we all want to have a job. And we are very uh, um, keen to educate people that are going to have good employment possibilities. Personally, for me, that's very important. And uh, I can say that our graduates uh, definitely have um, opportunities. And just, you know, a few, I try to give a few examples of what people do after they graduate here. Um, production manager in a biorefinery or, or, or a pulp or, or, or a paper mill is a typical, um, a typical uh, uh, career. Uh, research engineer. In a chemical or machinery supplier company, so there's a number of companies that are dealing in this sector, and they could be making equipment for for uh, uh, pulp mills and biorefineries, or 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 some, some other kind of equipment, pumps or process control units or whatever kinds of things. Sales and customer service uh, engineers are are very typical. Uh, some people stay in in research and uh, work towards a PhD. Either either here or they go to another another university and, and study there, or some people do that in in uh, a, a research institute and many other things. People go into patent office. People go into a range of different companies. Some students actually nowadays start up their own company, and 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 uh, uh, some have a uh, you know started the company and sold it, and uh, you know I've seen all, all kinds of things going. Um, going on nowadays. So, you know, in the in the history, uh, mostly this was a large, you know, we were educating students for large scale industry. But nowadays things are changing quite much that the bioeconomy is really open to uh, small companies. And in, in Finland, there's there's a dozen or so, you know, small companies that have been started in the last few years. Uh, spinning fibers or making packaging solutions or or uh, sometimes in, in in for example food you know making you know some kind of vegan vegan type of food out of uh, some sort of biological materials and 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 uh, many many other things so uh, uh, many many types of uh, possibilities for for uh, career and uh, here's uh, one 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 guy uh, who who actually studied here a number of years ago, Rudine. I know Rudine. He was he was somehow from my time, and uh, I asked uh, Rudine recently what he what he thought about uh, about his um, time in Alto. And you can read you can read on the screen what he what, what he says, but I, I can tell you I can tell you what he did, actually. So Rudine was from uh, South America, from Chile, and uh, he came to Alto to learn. Uh, more about uh, pulping and uh, pulping chemistry. 
And he did that. And then he went back to Chile and then into, into other places in South America. South America has a very, a very well-developed pulp industry. And uh, so he worked, he, he worked uh, as a research manager in different companies. And uh, at that time, he was ambitious uh, technically, and he wanted to complete his doctoral studies at our uh, department. So he he did that remotely, actually, while he was working in uh, South America. And then and then he, uh, he he made a few trips over here, and he did the research at his mill in South America. And you know he had to he had to make about four or five uh, articles worth of research and complete quite a few credits. A bunch of which he did for me, read, reading books and taking exams and writing papers and doing different things like that. And uh, then, then uh, upon uh, graduation, uh, he actually uh, moved to Indonesia, and he has been uh, as a research director in a big company in Indonesia now for a number of years. And he's been very, very successful in his his career, and he's a real a real world uh, expert in in uh, faulting chemistry. So many, many of the many of the students who've come here from uh, developing countries have been able sort of to leverage the knowledge that they gain over here, go back and develop their own uh, own industry. And I've seen that in 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 China, in uh, Eastern Europe, uh, here here in South America, Indonesia, many, many, many other places. Uh, so that's that's you know that's one route for people to you know to do things. Um, and uh, research and, and, and study facilities, a little bit about, about that. Uh, we have basically pretty good uh, facilities here. We have, we have nice uh, classrooms and we have good laboratories and you would do a lot of things in the laboratory. For example, we have recently, here's this uh, excellent lab and bio facilities. This is our, 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 our pilot hall, if you will, which we have renewed a few years ago. And it was very old fashioned, bad looking before. And now we have lots of new equipment and we're doing lots of things. Uh, some of this equipment you see here deals with the production of nanocellulose, one of the important raw materials. So we have a lot of research here on, on, on nanocellulose and uh, research on spinning uh, fibers for textiles and new packaging solutions and different things. So this is laboratory and semi-pilot scale um, uh, equipment. And then we have made some some different kinds of programs like uh, Chem Arts is a is a combination of chemistry and the arts where design students learn chemistry and chemistry students learn design and they look at the range of products that we can we can uh, make and we have some some courses and uh, summer courses and courses during the year with very very popular with lots and lots of students um, uh, learning learning about the design possibility of cellulosic. Uh, uh, materials. And um, and then these are just Finceris and Ionicel. Uh, Ionicel was a technology that was developed here, a new way to spin fibers from uh, uh, trees, basically. And uh, fin Finceris is a big, uh, a, a very large national program involving all sorts of, of, of different disciplines on uh, use of, of lignocellulosic uh, materials. So that's mo mostly on the on the PhD level, but like you know, just to give you an idea of the different sort of like some of the different things going on uh, around around here. Um, and then intern in in internship possibilities. Usually, the way it happens, right, is uh, for us, is is that a, an internship means you know doing part of your work in a company, and the best way to make that happen is to secure a master's thesis place in the company. So this is very recent. One of my students, uh, Netsanet, um, got a got a job in UPM Cumina and she found that herself on the, in, you know, she contacted the company and, and said she was my student and, and would they have a place for her? And, and first they said, they said no. And then she contacted again and then they said yes. And uh, so she got a she got a job working in their their uh, wood polymer composite business. So they 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 make a certain um, category of, comp of composites of polyethylene cellulose fiber composites, and they would like to get those to work better so that they could use more cellulose in in that product and make uh, the cost structure more favorable and make the the product more uh, the product more. Um, 
and uh, environmental. And she had a very good uh, success uh, in that there with her with her thesis and and so on. So now she's on she's on she's on to new things. So I have right now I, I have many, many students in the industry doing uh, different types of things, and st some students stay here also and work in different research groups and 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 do their thesis. So the thesis is a good you know it's a good experience. Uh, some students uh, opt for exchange programs. We have a range of um, countries where we have, um, or in institutions in different countries where we have exchange agreements with, and uh, if you are desiring to do some of your, your study uh, experience abroad, uh, that is also a possible. And there, there are different options for, for that one. And Ah, so the student experience. Now I am myself actually very uh, interested to hear what my very good student will have to say about her experience here at Alto. So <laughs> I can let the, <laughs> the floor is yours. <laughs> okay, so hello again, everybody. I'm Fateme, and uh, I came from Iran three months ago, uh, and I'm studying fiber and polymer engineering, which is like now it's Spanish, but it was available last year. <laughs> now it's kind of inside the bioproducts engineering major. And um, I found a lot of interesting stuff here at Alto and in Finland. I am so happy about my choice. Um, and I'm also working as a research assistant currently at Alto. I can say that um, it's been a really interesting experience till now because at first I chose a uh, fiber and polymer engineering major based on the polymer engineering part. So I actually didn't know a lot about fiber. And when I came here, I had a lot of courses related to solid cellulose and uh, wood based and fiber based products and everything. And I was a bit confused. But then I figured out how beautiful these courses and things are to learn and um now I feel so interested mostly in the fiber part so it's like uh, it's a huge change that happened and also it's really interesting because there are a lot of companies here working on the biomaterial stuff and cellulose and uh wood because fiber is like a hot topic these days in Finland considering that huge forests and availability of uh, wood here. Uh, so on all, all that I'm saying is kind of related to bioproducts engineering because it's kind of the same, a, a bit different, but it has the material in the fiber and polymer engineering major. And the uh, environment is like so cool. I can say that people are so friendly and uh, they help in whatever issue that you're having. We can talk to any, everybody and ask about uh, your issues um, and there are a lot of possibilities in in Alto considering that they're always encouraging students to participate in different uh, programs, workshops, um, a lot of, they have like, there are a lot of possibilities to like see different companies, their environment, meet new people and make connections and all of these are like um, provided by university. Um, which is so interesting, and I didn't have, see these kind of opportunities uh, during my bachelor studies. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I had to say for now. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you for that, and then we can take questions also from this yeah. this per perspective. Uh, you know, we have a few more a few more slides to go through, and then then we open this up for your for your um, for your questions. Um. Yeah, the student, uh, I, I the student life here. I, I, I won't go into it in you know detail because uh, you know it's so long. It's so long ago. I might have you know I might have forgotten you know, what is, what is what is the student life. But it's uh, anyway anyway. It's a it's a, it's a rich uh, a rich student life. We have these guilds. Uh, we have these guilds here, uh, for example. That, uh, you know, I, I could just tell you like one. You know, just uh, for example. Um, Forest industry. Yeah, the Forest Industry Guild, right? They they have a they have a they have a big trip they organize every year, uh, called the Infinity Scotty Have you been on this? 
one where they visit the different villains. And... No, not that way. It was like the three days traveling. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do that, but it seems very interesting. Yeah, it was. I think it was even five, five days. You know, so they they go around all over to the the. the uh, uh, you know the country visiting different mills, making contacts, and and of course the mills are providing lots of beer and stuff yeah. like that. I think that's the main, the main, the main motivation. So so, uh, uh, it, but we're trying to uh, in the new in the new program we're trying to um, in a little bit more structured way incorporate this visits to the industry into, into the program and 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 so on. So so um, there's uh there's all 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 types of uh, all types of things. Uh, going. A lot of parties. A lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of parties and, 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 and things like that. And Helsinki is a, Helsinki is a, a definitely a nice city, very liberal city. So you, if you come here, you'll find out about that. And, and, and the, ben, the, the benefits, I don't know, you know, Susan in the background can tell more if, if there's, there's, there's questions, but you get, a, you get, a, anyway, you get a cheap lunch. And uh, you know, there's there's uh, some stores and uh, you know some re and things where you can get some discounts, student you know student student discounts and 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 things like that. And and uh, although there's a housing um, problem for students around Helsinki, definitely not so severe as it is uh, in some other countries. And and uh, we do have support, uh, you know, to help the students get uh, get housing in, in Finland. And to my knowledge, that has not been a a roadblock for for students uh, coming here, and we have some healthcare services that are uh, pretty reasonable, uh, also. So uh, dent dental care and and and, and healthcare. Uh, so, so some some things some things like 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 that, uh, and uh, well, I'm not going to go into more into detail about the admission. The admissions uh, happens once a year, and it is open now, actually. So if you're interested to apply, you can do that right right now. And and uh, I think if you have more specific questions, uh, you can go to this website and ask there. We have Susanna here uh, also. Could, we can uh, you know answer some specific uh, uh, questions on 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 getting into the uh, into the program. Uh, okay. I, I think that uh, that is basically what I had to uh, present. So now uh, don't be don't be shy. Uh, it's, it's your future. If you're if you're if you're interested to if you're interested to uh, uh, study here, ask. And you have some questions, go ahead and ask. Yes, you know I can tell you why you were thinking of your question. I do not do my courses online, and this is why. During the pandemic, we had lots of we had lots of this. So if you if you if you come here, you will for my courses and most of the other professors too. You're going to have to go there and uh, and and discuss. Actually, so that's the uh, uh, that's that's the way it works. Well, it works over here. Um, somebody asked, is research assistantship position offered to master's students? If I can yes, please. That would be for you to answer. Well, there is not an offer, actually. If you want that kind of positions, you can just go and talk to the professors that you are like, interested in their um, field. And if they have a position, then they might offer you, considering that you're, what is your CV and what is your major. But I mean, I myself talked to a lot of professors. So at least I found a professor who um, had a really interesting like field. And then he said, OK, but it's not like offering in general. How many professors did you have to talk to? I guess seven or eight till I found the professor who said, OK. But if he wouldn't, then I would just continue because yeah. there are a lot of professors here. That's that's the, the lesson, you know. If you really try, you can you can some way. You really tried. <laughs> yeah. I because you talked to me, and well, I didn't have anything available, and and yeah. and you 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 continued at that time. You looked 
you looked, uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit, you know, worried. But you know, I give you credit. You persevered, and you, you know, you found the guy with money and topics, and uh, and, and so on. So. And also, there was very great advice that you gave me at that time. Oh man. Yeah, thank you. No, I mean you can, you know, that's the that, that, that that's the way to solve that one. Is uh, there's around 20 professors in this department, so uh, you know, circulate around and 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 ask, you know, what, what if people need uh, help, and if you find the right the right right guy at the right time uh, or right woman at the right time, then you can you can you know, land land a job. But uh, how many how many hours a week do you do you actually work? 18, 18 hours, it's like 50%. Oh, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, 18 hours, but yeah, I'm fine with it. We're not, it's not actually recommended. We exactly. recommend, we don't, we recommend like that. You got, you know, you got to complete your studies too, you know, and, and you should really try to complete these in, 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 in two years. So that's, you know, that requires good management of your, of your, of your time. Yeah, I also have a lot of courses up here. Um, is it possible to have a look for the courses in each specific major? I know there will be some papers, but in the previous webinar, there was a chance to check the courses in process and the course itself. I guess it can post rate, but the uh, courses they need. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not really I don't know, Susanna. Susanna, you're right there. What do you what do you say about what, when can the students take a look at these courses? Their, our curriculum is not ready yet. Yeah, the curriculum is not ready yet, and it will be published by the first of April. So the course lists are not available like published, but I think some webinars, program webinar showed some course lists. Uh, even though they are not published yet, but we don't have them here. At yeah, the I don't. I, I don't have here, but but the the I can tell you. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about uh, uh, the courses. Uh, the 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 mandatory uh, courses. There is uh, one course called uh, Analytics of uh, Biomaterials, which will will deal with. Uh, basically laboratory analysis of 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 uh, wood and bio-based uh, materials then there is another course called the uh, fiber processing which will will go into fiber um will go into uh uh engineering and uh, anatomy and, and chemistry of natural uh, cellulosic uh, fibers then there there is a course in uh surface chemistry of uh bio-based materials uh then then there then there is a course in um uh biomass uh preparation uh at least uh, at least uh, those courses come to uh come to mind yes is there an opportunity? No, no, I'm sorry. How is the collaboration with the industry? Could you give examples of how this reflected on the program? Yeah, sure. I can. I can. I can. I can give. I can give examples uh, about that. We have. We have a. We have a constant uh, dialogue with with uh, the industry stakeholders. So when we developed the curriculum, we we had a meeting with the with the important industry stakeholders, and we got their 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 input. Uh, th this includes the Finnish Pulp and Paper Engineers Association, uh, representing you know the larger industry, and then representatives from uh, many different companies, and we took their input. And 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 we incorporate that into our into our curriculum planning and design, and we have a constant we have all a manner of research projects with these same people, these same stakeholders, and a constant dialogue with them about about uh, you know the, the the development of the program. So they they are giving their input you know informally and formally through those uh, uh, those channels. And many of the uh, the the students 
are are working in in various research projects that are are largely paid for by these uh, same companies. But for the students, I think I think uh, this collaboration uh, happens through employment at one of the companies, and there are for there are basically two opportunities for for that, uh, or, or well, mostly two. There can be more opportunities, but. One is uh, through a summer a summer position between your first and second year of study. Uh, most of the companies in Finland will uh, hire students to work in the summer. Sometimes they are substituting people who are going on vacation and working as you know summer uh, re replacements uh, for people on vacation uh, or or some some other types of uh, positions. Uh, the second way, which probably happens more more frequently, is by uh, securing the master's thesis position, which I talked about. Unfortunately, uh, this th this depends largely on uh, the activity of the student yourself. So you yourself have to contact uh, the companies uh, through their websites or, or through different representatives. Uh, for foreign students, that's a little bit more difficult. And uh, if students come to me and they ask, uh, very often, I will get some names of people to contact who I know might be looking for somebody. Or likewise, companies contact us, and sometimes we post those, those positions, and students can apply to uh, uh, apply to those. So it goes that way. But uh, if you certainly want to um, uh, secure a place in a, in a company, then you should be active and, and um, uh, contact those companies. All, all the, the, the big companies here take lots of master's students. Uh, yeah, every year, uh, when we at least when the economy is, is is normal, when the economy is a little bit soft like it is now, they might they maybe are, are taking are taking uh, less. And then then beyond that, there are some events at the university where the companies come and uh, promote themselves and explain about you know how to apply to their company and the type of activities. If they have, I don't, have you been to any of those kind of things? Like all of them, I guess. Oh, and what has been your experience? Um, there was like a huge kind of uh, experience in the talent expo. There were like, I don't know how many, maybe 150 different companies that were there presenting themselves and um, you could just see promoting themselves and you could see like what are the opportunities. What are the positions that they open? And um, there are a lot of career evenings here at like chemical engineering department. So um, like you can meet with some of these like six or seven different companies and uh, they might have some offers and at least you can just make connections yeah. there, which yeah. is very, very important in Finland. Yeah. Because nowadays I can see the same people from those companies everywhere. So yeah, it's, it's like, small. Small. yeah. And also there is like this uh, all to, uh, international talent program. Yeah. Which are um like you have I have we had to apply for that program and then there is a mentor from one of these companies. Right. My name is Kendra, and um like we will have a two month or more like time for meeting with that mentor, asking about working culture, making connections, and these kind of stuff which are beneficial. Are you are you a member of the uh, uh Finnish Pulp and Paper Engineers Association? Yeah. yeah, that's another. That's another one. You can you can join, and then they have student events and so on. So there are there are there are different uh, there are different possibilities that you heard. I don't want to give the impression that it's very easy uh, for a for a foreign person. It is not. Yes. You know, uh, but it is possible, and it helps. You know, if you really want to integrate in Finland, you know, like like live here and stuff, then you need to learn Finnish for sure. And you need to network and meet all these people because it's a small group of people. You start, it's true. You start running into the same ones. And if they see you a few times, then they, they are comfortable with you. And, uh, you know, uh, also these, these companies here, they need to internationalize. So they're, they're eager to, to, to recruit uh, foreign students. But, you know, there's a, a barrier to over, overcome, you know, to do, to do that. So uh, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not easy, but uh, uh, it's possible. And there are many... Uh, Many opportunities. Let's see what else we have. Um, there was a question up oh, there. It yeah. was about can we? It's not here now, but they asked me. Hey, can we, is there an opportunity to study this program with a baby? If have, what is the advantage? 
Wow. I don't know. I don't know about that. Susanna, Susanna, are you like more knowing about babies and things? Uh, well, I think it is possible, but it also depends on the student, of course. And I don't know about the laboratory work. Is it safe or something if you are like nursing the baby or I don't know about the chemical stuff? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that I better I no no I don't think you could work in the laboratory and, and like like that. And I, I I don't I don't know. I think I I better not I better not you know start answering what I I really don't know about. Actually, let's see what else do we have. I'll go down. Are there possibilities to do research internship with the department without being an older student? Like they come here for an internship. Uh, sure. Yeah, we uh, like short term, a uh, short term scientific mission. Um, uh, you know, for example, for example, I'm 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 also a visiting professor in, in Portugal at Coimbra University, and uh, you know, I've had some students come from there to to do some work over here, and we have you know all kinds of collaboration, but mostly mostly it's on the doctoral level, actually. So mostly it's PhD students coming from different. Uh, different uh, universities, but we have an Erasmus program here, uh, and we have we have many students coming from all over Europe to study here and do like a year in, in that program and and so on. So very often those things happen with uh, with uh, programs and so on, or if there's a professor and a, a direct uh, connection. But uh, we are we are all for 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 networking and and. Uh, Collaborating, and we have lots of visiting people coming and going, and uh, and so on. So there's different possibilities. Are there any more? Well, last uh, last uh, possibility. Uh, you guys have been active in the chat box. I I appreciate that, and I I hope that you uh, will see you know. Uh, something uh, attractive uh, at, at Alta University. Certainly, if you're interested to do things with the forest, and by that I mean, uh, you know, extracting materials and solutions and knowledge and ideas out of the forest to make a more sustainable world, uh, this is a good place for, for that. Ab ab absolutely. And, and, and Finland said a nice place to spend a couple of years and uh, you will, you will, you know, build a good, a good network here that will, will, will serve you well, even if you move on to, to other places. So, uh, I guess uh, if there, no, there's no more questions. Then I say uh, goodbye and uh, thank you, thank you for your attention. Thank you.